Hello, I'm Stephen Monkey Mason and welcome back to the podcast. And I'm joined once again by Paul Ray, the movie pop guys on the phone. Hello, everyone. I thought he'd gone there. We're going to watch Ghostbusters answer the call. And um, this is the extended version. Well, hopefully it's going to play in time on both ends because Paul's had to watch. He's watching it via his Amazon account onto his television as well as talking to us on the phone. So uh, the main source of the production is here, though. So um, if Paul mumbles away, that's just Paul in real life. So... Are you ready, Paul, to press player? Yeah, do the countdown. The final countdown. Three, two, one, play. Right. So Here Sony comes up. Right, right, so I went to see this at the pictures on opening night for free. Um, after I, I had a massive complaint and running with the audience after two nights, I went to see The Conjuring, and there was a group of lads behind us, and they just kept on talking and talking and talking. And at the start of the country, and there's so much information thrown in your face about why they're going to England. And I just turned around and told all four of them to shut the fuck up or I'm going to stand up. And at the end of uh, the film, they all squared up to us. And I was just like, I don't care. Like, you're dicks. Um, so security came over to us, and the kid was about 18 year old. And I says, look, it says, the end of the day, I've come to the pictures to watch a movie. I haven't come to hear somebody's night out the night before. Because they had their feet on the seats, and it was just a very, very bad experience. And um, a week after that, uh, or two weeks, I went to see Kong, um, Skull Island. And um, I was waiting for the end credits scene where it shows you Godzilla's coming into it, you know, and that. And there was two kids at the back of the seat throwing fucking bottles down. And one of them hit me, well, my ex-girlfriend at the time, nearly hit her in the back of the head. And the bottles weren't fully emptied, you know, and like, he was chucking them down. And I marched up there, and one of them had a broken arm, and the other one in the stunk of drink so much. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And as soon as I got up there, they sunk right into the seats. But they hadn't even been in the pictures that had snuck in. The top doors of the audience were just sitting there and just pissed out their heads, chucking shit at people at the cinema. There's when... a story of two hours and 13 minutes, because the film's ain't finished. What do you mean? But yeah, no man. I yeah. know. And then you went to see the nights after, didn't you? So you went to see it for free. Well, now, that's it. They give us a free ticket for it, like so. Again, that's how I ended up going to see Ghostbusters because when I initially saw the trailer, for having so much love for the film, I almost didn't want to see it. Yeah, yeah. So let's get back to um, Ghost Corpse. Yeah, obviously that was set up for like a Ghostbusters universe. So if this did well, there'll be another film. Then we'll do a TV show. Then we'd do obviously the comic book stuff like that. So. Hopefully with Afterlife there's still Ghost Corps around because obviously that, that's the picture I think that they're using for it. Um, but yes, I actually enjoyed this film more than I thought I would. It, there is little bits of bobs I was like, I don't get a joke or too Americanized by explaining like, Spain and but I was very surprised that I actually enjoyed it more than, 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 I, than I thought I would. I mean, it, it looks good, um, but obviously straight out the bat, the biggest criticism that was coming out of it is that they're all girls. And even to the point that uh, Annie Potts' character is now played by uh, Chris Helmsworth. You know, it was just like a whole 180. And I mean, I've got nothing problem with them all being girls, but it was more the fact of um, it's three white girls and one black girl. You know what I mean? It's just sort of like like sort of that reboot era. Um, but they sort of just didn't really, I don't know, make it its own in a way. But it, it is, it, I mean, it is quite more edgier. It's... A great introduction to like younger generations, you know, because the first Ghostbusters, as we talked about, is quite dark. This is very colourful and content as the way it looks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sony's put uh, the money behind it. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, the budget was crazy for it. I, went, I mean, when I went to see the pictures, I've seen 3D, and the 3D is probably one of the best 3Ds I've seen since maybe Avatar. Yeah, when I, first came out. I mean, I didn't see it in 3D. As I say, I literally got a free ticket, and uh, it was like Ghostbusters had just come out, and this came out before it came out in America. Um, by a week or something, so um, when I released uh, my review for it, I got loads of fucking hate, just like people are using it as a fucking column of hate, like going, that shouldn't exist, yeah. it shouldn't be all women, and like, th there's nothing wrong with it being all women, I just think I had an opportunity to do a nice remake, and it just feels a little bit like it's very off-scripted, in a way. Well, that's obviously, with, 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 well, it's been a Saturday Night Live, um, girls come in, all funny girls, and they try to, you know, recapture the first film. Um, use all, you know, ab libs and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, Melissa McCarthy for me did me head in. Um, she was the only thing I've just my head in at the moment. I mean, when watching films, but she wasn't too bad in this. 
Um, but but Kate McKinnon was the favourite. I, I mean, Melissa McCarthy's big money, you know what I mean? She was a box office draw. I mean, she has started to slip a little bit when, you know, was it that Happy Time Murders hasn't even come out on Blu-ray over here? Uh, and that one with Richard E. Grant just seemed to just appear, so... I mean, look at the effects coming here when this uh, growl breaks. Yeah, the green slime on that's a good little intro to the film, as soon as you hear the, the, the theme, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I like mean, I said, it's, it's the same as the librarian ghost, it's just got a different twist on it. Yeah. And uh, even the music by Theodore Chaperon, or Chaperon, Theodore, I forgot his name now, um, is really good for the film, especially the, the Times Square, Battle on Times Square was, was really good. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people did say, oh, it's too much like Scooby Doo ghosts, but. I You're right, yeah, good. Scooby Doo, the colours, yeah. But even here, just the bleakness of Ghostbusters there. There's not even the, the logo as the O. Yeah. And you have a theme tune for two seconds. Because Fallout it Boy, innit? Off, like, original. You know, at the university, so... I think Kirsten, I mean, I think she looks beautiful, but she's very much like, um... Jennifer Anderson. I mean, if it was made five years prior to it, they probably would have cast Jennifer Anderson. But it's weird to think that, you know, after decades of wanting a new Ghostbusters, we're now getting another new Ghostbusters within a five-year radius. Yeah, yeah. Then again, if it wasn't for this film, we wouldn't have come an afterlife out, would we? And then, I think if it wasn't for this film, you wouldn't have for Ragnarok, because obviously that's when um, Chris Hemsworth, um, basically, his comedic role was in this film, and that's what led him to... Be that four character in Rajiva. Um, yeah. Well, also back them in um, Men in Black. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. For but Rajiva, I mean, he, he's he's absolutely fucking brilliant. I mean, don't get us wrong. I think everyone, no one dials in their performance in this. What's she out of? Who she's talking to? Who's that with the glasses on? Uh, no idea, cause. The IMDb's on my phone, so I'm just, I'm doing this blind. Yeah, like she. Oh, what's she been in, man? I recognise her from Summit. So obviously this is the extended edition, which kind of does obviously this bit here drag out a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well, that's it. I mean, extended. Normally, it's like the jokes they try to chuck in and that, and it works and not work. And sometimes the reactions and responses aren't to the actual joke, especially when you've got a scene cut off like this. Can you remember, was that a picture, so it was just called Ghostbusters, wasn't it, or Ghostbusters 2016? And obviously when it came out on physical media and stuff like that, it was called Ghostbusters Answer the Call. Yeah. Well, that was it, it was an introduction. I mean, we always had the video game as a, like, a genuine third one, especially with Harold Ramis, you know what I mean? So, that woman who's just been on with the glasses, man, that's doing my tits in, who she was in. Something from like the 90s or something like that. Ah, oh. uh, the ghosty ghosties. But yeah, it's a shame it didn't do that well. I mean, it was. It was but then said it brought me like a new generation of like Ghostbuster fans. I mean, for especially young ones. Now it's good to see like kids walking around with Ghostbusters T-shirts because obviously because of this film. Then because yeah. of this film, they go to the real film. Oh, I mean, the Hulseman character, I mean, definitely hit strong with the gay community. I know that because of, like, my ex's uh, sister. She was, like, absolutely obsessed with him, you know what I mean? And just, yeah. you know, the pop final, it's the most sought-out pop final out of the four and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, even the action figures, Hulseman is still the hardest one to get. I mean, on eBay, like, 15, 20 quid just for a Hulseman one. So she was, like, the, the popular one. And, like I said, Kay McKinnon is absolutely really funny, you know what I mean? So... I recently watched... Which way around yeah. do you see the characters transitioned here? Um, do you see uh, Kirsten Wing is Dan Aykroyd or Bill Murray? Because Holtzman's obviously um, Harold Ramis. Uh, it's, a, it's a mixture of... Uh, I, I, I don't know because obviously she... Uh, it's, it's a hard one really, isn't she? I think she's like her own new character, really, more than originals because obviously she's not the Bill Murray one. That I means she's... It's hard to really explain. So he comes Charles, Charles Dance. Charles Dance. <laughs> well. 
Um, I always remember Charles Dance as a fucking brilliant bad guy from Last Action Hero, but yes. um, Charles Dance in Space Truckers, when he has the robotic penis, he's got to charge up, um, <laughs> which is a bit like, uh, what the fuck? Um, I've just recently revisited that on uh, Blu-ray. I picked it up and... Yeah, it's a bit. But obviously, he's just a uh, new bad guy in Godzilla as well. And obviously, I mean, I've not seen Game of Thrones, but he's recognizable from that as well. Now, there is loads of, like, you know, subtle hints to this film, to the original film. Um, you know, like little things in the background, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wait till it comes on in a sec, because obviously, everyone knows the, the bust, don't they? Yeah, the bust That's is Harold Ramos in the background here. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just uh, really, really I mean, and then it comes in focus. It's absolutely really sweet. I think, like, so it does have it does have heart. The fearless scientist. I mean, the director. When I've heard the comedy and all that, I mean, you know, he he, he wanted to take it on, and he wanted to make the best of it. Is it just how it comes out in the edit? I think. Um, like he said that Dan Aykroyd loved it and then he's like well actually we spent too much money on this too much money on that I was like oh no and, I mean the promotion for this was everywhere if you think about it we even had, we even had like an Ecto-1 in the Metro Centre didn't we oh fuck I because you went disappeared on your lunch and took a picture of it didn't you oh you came back from uh, it and uh, you were like oh fuck I just seen an Ecto-1 I remember that day and actually I, I liked Ecto-1 on this actually uh, it's not too bad I mean, again, though, Dan Aykroyd was rocking that in the original. Um, oh, and the head thing. And this is this whole. This, no, this genre of Chinese, the the one time I, I I don't get it. I'm I'm. It's all the way through the film, but I think it's just me. I just I just don't get it. Oh, especially about the soup and that the noodles. <laughs> the noodles of what I don't know. One time I don't know what you call it. I'm trying to keep the volume down so it doesn't get picked up. That's a lot of fucking money for a takeaway. It must be dollars. Well, obviously it's dollars, like one dollar bill. Yeah. But again, this reflects back to um, when the original three Ghostbusters. But again, um, when they're all in the, the student lab and the dean comes in and starts taking the stuff out. Yeah. But obviously bringing it up to modern science and stuff like that, I mean, there's probably a lot of things you've got to work around on. There's pr there have been a lot of discoveries and a lot of new technology advancements since the original. To what they will have That's to cool. actually bring, yeah. I only own this because I picked it up on the um, the jock because um, HMV had the first two and then uh, Zavi got the this one from the uh, limited edition uh, steel books they brought out. Yeah, pop art ones. Um, wait, I think jock. I think the jock's the uh, uh, artist credit on them. Yeah, yeah, I think it comes pop art. I think like, but yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, just looking at the picture and all that, I mean. Sony did not hold back. I mean, Sheik uh, Holtzman's just appeared there, so her hairstyle yeah, yeah. looks like uh, Harold Ramis's Real from the cartoon. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, actually, I think the, the main person out here is Kate McKinnon. She did such a good job. I mean, would you... Goggles from in the space, by the looks of it, on the head. Aye. Uh, <laughs> I remember all those screw you necklaces everywhere on eBay. Aye, uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, a lot of like jokes thrown out here and that, and um, and like bridesmaids and all that were really popular, especially at that time because you had movies like The Hangover and like mm -hmm. that resurgent of like the American Pie, like that 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 next the next wave of like laugh out loud comedies where a lot of stars came out like Bradley Cooper came out of The Hangover with Zach Galifianakis who had, you know they'd been they'd been in films before that but like Alyssa McCarthy was yeah, big from Bridesmaids wasn't she? It's also Paul Feig isn't it so yeah it's yeah. same director yeah I mean 
I think I've seen Braid Maids once and that was enough for me, to be honest with you. I told you, you've got to watch You've Got Mail, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's a really good film. There are, there are some good jokes, especially what's coming up. Look at that eight track, like real, real kind of thing. But the real, the real pays off at the end when they hear Zool on the fucking spectrum, don't they? Yeah. You're right, though. There's a lot of there's a lot of dialogue. I mean, and it's stationary as well. Even thinking of the first Ghostbusters, you know, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray, they're all walking and talking. Um, it yeah. they don't really it moves a lot yeah they don't really slow down until they have that drink outside is it the library or the university. And from then there, they've just obviously been in that lab now for quite a while. Yeah, but it's extended for a reason, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Which I've only seen maybe like once, I think. Because it's got a lot of F-bombs in it and stuff. It's an F-bomb, but it's still a 12, though, isn't it? Uh, I think you have know, one F-bomb, aren't you? Yeah, but it's still a 12, yeah. Here's a good question for you. You know, in all these American movies we see, especially if you look at the lockers behind, have you ever seen somebody have to use a bottom locker? It's always the top locker, isn't it? Yeah, that's why I work. I always try and get the top lockers at work. <laughs> I'm not better now all the time. I'm at the top. Yep, me too. Do you know why I have a top locker at work for? Why? Because somebody who used to work there, which I will not name and shame, um was kept um a bottle of coke in the locker and um it fell over and obviously because the lockers have all got holes in it it dripped on top of my camera and my locker oh god and i was like that i but i was just i went absolutely ballistic i was just you know what i mean it's you you put your camera i was i was going to film a gig or something i think after it man and that's what happened Mm. now from to be honest with you, what I remember from going to see this at the pictures, I initially missed about the first five minutes. Because Why? as I said, well, because I had this free ticket and, and it was just basically oh, yeah. like, like, what's on and Ghostbusters was on. Right. But I tell you something about going to the pictures as well, going on another rant about the pictures. Like the, the art of the box office is lost now with pictures because you go there and it's like, you know, welcome to the pictures. What would you like to see? There's fucking nobody there. You've got to go and stand in the queue for like the popcorn and your drink, which is always massive. And you get there and and yeah, it's like, oh, is there any tickets left? No. Yeah. It, the box it's, office, you do miss the box office queues and stuff like that, but you just get a ticket. Like I said, when I normally go, and then we just use the, you know, self servicing. Oh, it that, on the yeah. They were just coming in, I think, around that time. They weren't up and running yet. Pringles. It's being exaggerated, isn't it? Now, the peak chemia just looks like a candy floss thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Got to have some Pringles. Now, do you, do, Pringles. now, do you want to know a funny story? The uh, camera, sh camera she holding, the camera we're filming on now is the next model up. Ah, uh, a Holtzman camera, I'm going to call it. Oh, no, please. They're, they're good cameras, but when you're filming like that, the fucking audio was terrible. I actually hate that as well. I hate it when they use um, cameras in the movies and the, the, the add on the the record button, the record button, the battery life, and all yeah. that. That's fucking never there. It's not like you being framed from the fucking nineties when the time code is stamped into the tape. You know, it's a digital yeah. display. But they always downgrade the fucking cameras because some of these modern cameras now, you know, they're getting better and better and better. I mean, yes, film is always going to look the best because of how much goes into like the treatment and stuff like that. But like on a digital platform, you know what I mean? It's I don't know why Sony would like down like that Sony's camera. I don't know why they would downgrade it to that lower quality. I don't think people are nerds like us to appreciate it. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, this is essentially the library ghost doing this. I mean, yeah. 
I mean, it looks amazing in HD. Like, yeah. as I've seen it, but it looks really good. Another thing about it is though, how it's cropped in later on when the um, the rays fly off the screen and go over the black boundaries. Yeah, the force and stuff, yeah. And even like, um, I think Patty's neck necklace or something like that hangs out there. I mean, what is going on? It looks like it's going to make candy fucking floss. That's it, yeah, it does, isn't it? Just a weird PQ meter, that like. <laughs> Again, though, it's creating a, like, I definitely don't, I mean, this looks like the Queen, um, every time, you know what I mean, it looks like the Queen on the notes. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see problem, but go, the ghosts look really well, I think that they have to be careful not to, because it, it, obviously it's all digital, you know what I mean, so hopefully Afterlife will basically be a bit of both, hopefully you're using, you know, practical and um, digital, but I, I think I think it looks really good, I think ghosts are, you know, like I said, a lot of people are like, oh, it's too Scooby-Doo, like, no way, Scoops! You know what I mean, the thing is like too much Scooby Doo, but I think they're really colourful, and obviously it pops out on the screen. Tell you what, though, I mean, I, I seen Scooby Doo at the pictures. Um, in oh, I know it's gonna be a final pal. It was, Zoinks. it was classic. Oh, it's awesome, it's Shaggy. The best, uh, the best thing about Scooby Doo is when um, Matthew Lillard's in uh, Looney Tunes back in action, <laughs> when oh, the cartoons God. are giving him grief. <laughs> I mean, the every hole comment and stuff like that. I mean, it's. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. I think that sign looks really good. They spent ages doing it, didn't they? Well, yeah, yeah. Hours and hours trying to get the right thingy for the sign. And he had a little bit of a Ghostbusters do, 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 do. I am about. Um, a few, I'm a little bit ahead of you because I've just heard Holtzman echo on yours. Oh, uh, really? Not much, not no. much. Pause yours by a second because I'm not touching my phone because I've been there for five hours. If you pause yours pause a second, it. then. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we're a bit more on time. Uh, hopefully, people just listen to us as a podcast and not try to watch it with us. It is, it is hard, though. I don't know how people do it. I mean, it has been an easier way of doing it, like, but. Yeah, I mean, if you know the film off by heart, you can just listen to this on the bloody bus. I, mean, I often, I like listening to, po I mean, I actually went to bed last night listening to the audio commentary for It, the original 90s movie, with Tommy, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace and uh, stuff like John Ritter and stuff. It's a fucking long-ass right. commentary because uh, on Blu-ray, it plays as one film. Um, yeah, the TV movie, yeah. Yeah, but it's a really, really good um, retrospective because it's years later, you know. And I love companies like that. I like John Carpenter and Kurt Russell revisiting um, and reminiscing. I'm not a big fan of companies that are released before the... Uh, have been recorded before the film's even been released. Yeah. Y yes, it's but an essential, that's... but it's sometimes... Yeah. But I do, I do. There's a lot of people out there online doing podcasts and... Some people click on them thinking they're going to see a free movie. Some people like to just listen to people like doing a bit of work, doing a bit of painting, you know, stick it on and someone's yeah. just talking, you know. And then people go, what are these two idiots on about? There's no dick from Dom, these two. But, you know, it's, it's, it's I, something we're, we're interested in, something that we like, and it's something new, really. You know I mean, yeah, I mean I, I, all the podcasts we're going to do, it's sharing a passion and it's, it's great to find a, a platform because... As this film, as she goes back and starts kicking off with all them wires, which I would love not to uh, untangle. Um, we live so far apart, but we see each other on a daily basis at work. But you don't drive. Yeah. And, like, the drive from my house to Paul's house is about an hour yeah. and a half. If I was to drive to mine to yours, um, it, it, yeah, you're talking almost an hour and a half, depending on traffic. Um, but to do this and find this formula that it works, you know, and it's, well, it, it's great to talk about stuff, you know. I definitely, I mean, like I said, hopefully, like, people enjoy it, and hopefully, obviously, the, the, the Wi-Fi and internet isn't too bad. Um, get yourself a, a new better phone and a new microphone also, and hopefully that might improve a little bit better for sound quality, but just really appreci appreciate what people listening. It's, it's, it's good. Thank you. It just encourages us more to do, do a bit more of these nerdy things. I just can't wait for the turtles. We were going to do the tales for him, and we're not going to do this one, but... Yeah. What the fuck? I mean, the, but the response for the Ghostbusters ones has been really good, I think, so... Let me as well finish off with this one. But yeah, it's... Oh, no, again... Yeah. And after that, that's you and mine, that. 
commenting about, about girls being Ghostbusters. What's that? What a nice comment. No, I'm just kidding. You know all the bit where she reads up a thing? Oh. Know, I think the girls can bust ghosts and stuff like that. And that's obviously that's a real life comment that someone put on on a YouTube video and they used it in this film. Well, that's it though, you know, it's. Real. It's how you, like, the controversy and stuff like that. It's. You're never going to satisfy everyone. That's why YouTube no longer does stars one to five. It's thumbs up or thumbs down. And if someone hits you with a thumbs down and, like, they leave no comment, you've just got to go, right? You know? A thumbs down is better than no one doing, better than anyone not even watching, isn't it? I mean, from 10 thumbs down is better than one thumbs up, aren't they? If someone's, I mean. Ah, that's it. I mean, you can't control the world. So he's another Dean character who I think this is a bit weird. I mean, he must have some. He must be American personality. I mean, I personally. Yeah, he'd be someone for us, yeah. You know, someone. Because it's pretty funny with his uh, fingers. Yeah, and it, it's quite. Them. Yeah, it's, it's a skit that someone's been given. You know what I mean? I mean, could that that could have been Dan Aykroyd? Yeah. Hey, I ain't afraid of no ghost with his really bad uh, New York accent. Hey. hey. But that could have been. But you just look around, especially when you do the podcast, and you think, oh, is there like a joke here? I mean, his desk is pretty cluttered. He's got seashells. He's got fucking bongos in the background. He looks like he's got a party hat. He's got loads of shot glasses and. Yeah. (laughs) What? I mean, I don't get the finger thing. This bit's pretty funny though, I really I remember... Oh, when the run. Like, yeah, when he realised I've nicked it. I do actually like, um... Miss McCarvey's glasses, actually, they're pretty good, actually. Black and yellow ones. I may have a look around for some. Actually, Holtzman's are the best. The thing is, if you had glasses on like Holtzman, you can't really see anything coming left or right on your wide vision. <laughs> no. <laughs> like plain ones, aren't they? Right, so unlike the first two movies, as we uh, get introduced to um, the fourth ghost, well, yeah, for Winston, yeah. Um, Discount, yeah, discount Kevin James, isn't he? (laughs) But, like, this is the first time there's been, like, a genuine, like, a bad guy in the Ghostbusters movie, like, away from, um, it's me, Janosch. He's yeah, he comes yeah. he comes in as like I'm gonna cause the problem, you know what I mean? Yeah, which is pretty good actually. Which, which is a really good writing actually. It's like, it's like to see someone who's creating this, like I mean, all this stuff to bring ghosts in, into the world. I didn't mind Leslie Jones. who was actually alright. Sorry, Patty. Fucking train tracks, man. Back down the train tracks. Look at him. Like a stealthy ninja. <laughs> but even the colour coming off the flashes, the blues, the purples in it. I mean, I love that kind of colour. And Jack sees a ghost, which is... You know, reminiscent of the second film with the, the heads on the stick? There's a ghost in the train yeah. station. So what did you think of the story of um, Bill Murray coming back as a ghost and the original ideas? Because originally yeah. stuff like Sean William Scott was going to be brought into the Ghostbusters and stuff, wasn't he? After yeah. the the assess of um, um, evolution. Yeah. Nah, if, if Bill Murray came back as a ghost, it'd just be like bloody Casper. You look <laughs> at Casper and stuff, nah. Well, hang on a minute. Like That's almost like a Scaleri brother, that. Someone who's uh, yeah, in the this, this seats. Um, with his um, prison suit on, um, outfit on. See, I again, love. It does have a building on it, so. Hmm. Again, I love all the films when you got um. You see, an um, I don't know, is it Lethal Weapon Two and the Lost Boys is on it, the pictures and stuff like that, and you got that crossover. Oh, yeah. Now everything's like oh, branded. Yeah. Well, like, 
Crows and um, the Turtles. Where they come up with this stuff? Yeah. There was some no legal battles, no way to really like skips around. I mean, it would have been really awesome to see a picture of Vigo somewhere in here, hidden away. Uh, I mean, he has you got can like. Tell he's a loner, and you can tell there's something up. I was to see Kevin James. But again, would this not a benefit having a bigger actor play it? I mean, he definitely turns on the creep, but would it not have benefited by somebody else? Oh, lovely. Uh, th this is the best bit of the film, I think. Like, nice. Oh, yes, yes. I was like, yes, excellent. So, obviously, that's the... Yeah, the LA one. But obviously, that's the LA one. Obviously, they would have just been there for the day, and that's how it probably is all the time for the set. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I love this bit. <laughs> the first. Oh, well, that's another F bomb. There's a few F bombs on this. Yeah. Did she say fuck me or something there? Because I can't, I can't fully hear her away. F you. Tricky with PG. Obviously, the trailer's kind of spoiled a little bit because you knew they were going to have a Chinese place, so you know that kind of defeated the point. It's nice uh, to have the firehouse. In it it is nice there. Uh, it's his cameo on its own. I mean, they do play a lot of respect. I mean, but again, here's this joke about the noodles. Yeah, the one ton. I hate shrimp, like. Uh, I hate seafood. I love the song, though. Again, though, throws back to, like, the 80s montage. But when you look at cosplay and stuff like that, especially in this movie, there was a lot of people rocking her as a cosplay. Yeah, yeah. The bar. Yeah. It just shows you she's crazy and she's just setting fire to everything. <laughs> oh, that's a bit rude. The fire extinguisher. The colours, though, you've got to give them credit for the colour. It's so colourful, the film. Yeah. So, Rick Moranis' character is not there. Um, Scony Weaver's character is not in it. Um, so they didn't really do anything with them roles, did they? No, there's no keyhole. They came master keyholders. Was the um, key masters or gatekeepers? In I think the story. I think the story is a lot simpler than the very first film. But it, about it. Well, yeah, but it does follow, like, obviously, by the end of it, we have a big fucking creature again, so it's oh, kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. So here comes but, Chris Helmsworth. Yeah. Now, I've seen a film with him in called Perfect Getaway, and he's fucking brilliant in that, even though it's a small role, and you wouldn't think that he's the same fucking actor. Um, he's done... I was... Yeah, I was never a fan of um, Chris Helmsworth, to be honest, because like, of Thorne stuff. I was never a big, big fan, but since this film... I don't mind him. I mean, he's, he's actually like he used to be kind of like just ah, uh, certain films he's just kind of like like just playing and stuff. I mean, go buy him four, and this is actually really funny. Have you seen many of the later four movies? Uh, I think the first one and Ragnarok, and that was it. because uh, he's—I mean, his character developed a hell of a lot. But that's again, again, you could say it comes from like here, like he's got a chance to show his comedic value because he was in stuff yeah. like the Red Dawn remake. Um, Oh, it's one for fucking 12 strong and, you know, because he, he's bulked up, you know what I mean? But, yeah. I mean, this thing with the glasses, like, I mean, that is quite funny. I, I'm not sure, I, I was in pictures and pictures, I was going, did I just say what I've just seen? Yeah. Like... But again, this, it, I mean, this works, but again, it, it is completely vice versa, you know? I think most of this was ad-libbed also. Have we seen the new Jay and Silent Bob when he appears in that? Yeah, it's the... Um, Hologram. Person. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't too keen. I loved the first Jay and Silent Bob, but the second one was too... Uh, and nah, I didn't enjoy it. I love that. Good idea, actually. I'm going to do that one, go back to work. <laughs> well, I fucking don't have any glasses in. Yeah, see what people say. Probably won't be able to afford it. 
Didn't you order your uh, Didn't you order your um, glasses from Asia or something like that? No, it was glasses. It was glasses direct. No, no publicity for them. It was six pounds eighty seven with um, twenty five percent off because I broke them overnight. So I'm using these. Oh shit! Now you sat on your glasses, didn't you? <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I couldn't afford twenty quid ones, so I can only afford like six pounds seventy nine ones. I'll do for now. But yeah, again, going back to, um, you know, these, I mean, it, it extend it or not extend it, it's kind of, it sort of stops, you know, sitting down. It's not like, you know, look how, you know, when Winston gets his original um, interview, do you know what I mean? How yeah. fast that, it, it, he's walking and talking again, it's always on the move. Um, here's some funky uh, shout outs to... Uh, Seven Eleven, man, for fuck's sake. So not many people get it up, yeah, would they? Because we don't have anything really called Seven Eleven. Which could have changed it to Tesco's or something. Well, like in Demolition Man, where it changed to Pizza Hut because uh, yeah. not everyone had Taco Bell. We, we've only just got one Taco Bell in town. That's it. I only had my first Taco Bell. Taco Bell in Spain a couple of years back. Um, I wish we had Seven Elevens. I tell you what, when we finish late at Christmas and then ten o'clock finishes. And there's fucking nothing open. It's like 11 o'clock. Eh? What was the shop called? Uh, the, the shop. What was the convenience store called in Bill and Ted? Was it K? No, no. What? You know, when I was in the telephone box. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot what it's called. Oh, that K. Moth, that's freaking Evil Dead, that. Ah, there's always like seven. Like, ah, it's. You know, the corner don't shops. Listen. You go in, you don't can. Don't listen. You... He covers his eyes, so he's not listening. <laughs> But like stuff like we just don't have like them like go in you can use a microwave or they do slush puppies all the time and you know it just yeah. really <laughs> that fucking reaction by Holtzman there when he's trying to touch the glass. Yeah, why was there a bloody telephone in a fish tank for? I never didn't really think of why. I mean, we talked about this the other night. I mean, water wells in my fish tank. Mate, that's your roommate. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's Arcadia for you. <laughs> but he's at, uh, he's pulling on his Australian accent because normally he drops that for a lot of his movies. Yeah. And he just trips over the, um, trips over the thing when he's down there. But yeah, it's got that Chinese kind of look and it's very, look at the colour though, look at the green, look at the, the doors and stuff, it's... Yeah. It's pretty good that she's like, like, she knows everything about the buildings and stuff, so it comes in handy. Otherwise, she just joins them for no reason. It's good to see equipment is so big up in a bloody trolley. At least, I mean, on here, they bring out where they get the logo from, though, don't they, as well? I love that. I thought it was a really good idea. And there's those posters and um, uh, the bus pass with it on also. But if you keep watching, what's weird is the digital enhancement on when he's spraying, he's got, like, red on his face from, like, the... Like, like it's like a digital effect, if you watch it. It's, it's, like, it's like a... It's like shining on his face, which is weird. If you see it in the center, if I remember right. That's a really good idea. I've got a logo. If we, if we watch. All right. <laughs> sort of like a Banksy spoof. She's quite tall, actually, compared to them. Yeah. <laughs> I think when it does the red paint, it kind of like, like, yeah, I think, that's right. see now, the digital enhancements. Oh, ah, really, just the, the glow on that. Yeah. But it's really good, I said, I mean, that, that's a really good idea. I mean, that's a lot of thought, but how can we do the symbol? That's really cool. I think that's a symbol for the, 
a soundtrack, you know, just the normal music, not the score. Just a yeah, right? I've had the vinyl in my hand a few times because it comes in like a uh, slime green and. Um... Yeah, I think that's the score one. Yeah, not the the, not the that's a score, not the soundtrack one. But yeah, you know, they're just normal the, the music from here, yeah, um, not the Fudor thingy ones, just the the, the Fall Out Boy one, which I actually enjoyed actually. Enjoy that song, I'm in here. But yeah, I haven't heard this album for ages, make put on later on. She is pretty tall, like, isn't she? Definitely. She got loads of hate for this film, also, didn't she? She had to go off Twitter and stuff like that, because now put abuse. They're just disgusting. Right, she, I mean, she's hired to do a job. You know what I mean? She wouldn't have been the first pick. They would have, like fizz. I no. mean, out of like, I mean, Melissa Carthy and Kirsten Wig were probably on board really early. You know what I mean? Because they could have went yeah, like, you know, me. you could have asked Jennifer Aniston and probably Sandra Bullock. They would have went with any like in it. You know what I mean? There would have been a short list, and then they would have cast. And you know what I mean? It's I mean. She didn't have to be a black woman. Yeah, they could have cast, you know what I mean. But then again, Sony's probably not wanted to like uh, whitewash the whole cast. You know what I mean. They could have brought in a lot. Yeah. But she does. She does well for what she is. She's exactly the same the way Ernie Hudson is in the first movie. She comes in as the audience who doesn't know what's going on. Because you've got to remember, this this will be the first Ghostbusters a lot of people will see because it's new. That's to say, yeah. They say it's a new generation for kids, really. And then the kids go back to watch the original too. I've had kids, like you said, in, in the shop who go, oh, can I watch this Ghostbusters? I always recommend watch this one first, get into it, because the ones are really dark, but a few kids, like, I just I love like neck brace, look at it. <laughs> I just wish they would take the effects off the camera. It's like, ugh. So it looks absolutely awesome, I think. It does. The colours look amazing. I mean, that looks like uh, Arcadia here in the room where it's uh, the blush of blue and orange. But it, it's because it comes off the um, screen. Off the letterbox, yeah. Which is really good. Like I said, when I've seen that picture, it's well cut of a 3D on it. It's a shame the 3D format's dying now, isn't it? It really is a shame. I know, uh, there was a massive boom with the tellies and the players, and you know, 4K yeah, wasn't too far along, wasn't it? You could only, you could only buy Avatar on a Panasonic TV if you bought, bought a, like, a two grand TV, then it would be on eBay for like 70 quid. That's it. I mean, with me personally, I mean. I've got. I just get a telly till it breaks. I've never been the one to go out and buy a brand new telly. Yeah. I mean, when I was in New Zealand, man, they had an eight K television on display. I've seen the ads. Wait for eight K. And my dad was like, "Oh, look at that telly!" And I was like, "I know, but like nothing's available." You know, yeah. and it like if you look at four K, you know, four K is just going to be in the case of like, um. There's only certain studios really got. I mean, Disney is still extremely fresh in 4K. They were, they were like out of DVD when DVD first came, but it took me years to come on the DVD. I love the Bigfoot sightings and stuff like that on the side there. That was quite funny. <laughs> That's a bit freaky, isn't it? She has a little slip. That's uh... <laughs> horrible, I think. But yeah, I think again, the story's dead simple. I mean, the guy goes round on the layer lines and puts some things down to get the lines to have ghosts to come over dead simple yeah Rowan Rowan that's his name Rowan yeah Rowan yeah because everyone follows the Ghostbuster um, Stay Puft and they put Stay Puft for ages I 
it's very colourful. I keep saying that, but it is. Every if you look from the car, the contrast, the goals, the carving, red. It, I mean, the the green in the background on the carpet. Yeah, they said it's always looked really good. Always looked really good. But again, there is like 4K is just such a niche market at the moment. I mean, if you go on 4K, obviously the discs are much better because you've got 4K HDR. But then if you go through Amazon and stuff, it's 4K UHD. But some of them don't have HDR on it either. They're well, full of brightness and the contrast. Uh, honestly, when I was in New Zealand, um, it wasn't until I got the GB Hi Fi's in Welton that I seen a very, very small um, five foot section of um, 4K, like just nowhere. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, like I said, the difference between <coughs> DVD and Blu-ray is a big, fast difference. The difference between Blu-ray and 4K is only... But then get it on 4K, you've got films that's already been at once, coming out again, remastered again. I know. Like, you find the same film again and again and again. Yeah, I know. It's really, yeah, you're right. I mean, you were talking about the transfer of Ghostbusters the other day, and, you know, Sony did that batch of mastered in 4K on Blu-ray, yeah. you know what I mean? And then I they've it, redone it again. It's massive in 4K, but it's downscale to 1080p. And then again, that's just like your Super Pet DVDs from years ago. Your Super Pet DVDs was 4.7 gig. But what it did, it took off all the extra features and the bonus stuff so the full disc would have a film on. Yeah. So you get a higher frame rate, that's all it was. I mean, I bet you love telling people where it, oh, it's only got half the film on, turn it over. Like, good fellas, it's only got half the film on, turn it over. I have to look. Oh. So it's a Hearst, so. Yeah. See, this isn't there. Um, you know, like, if you look at Ghostbusters 1 to now, and, like, obviously you can see that the sets are all locked down. You know, there's nobody like walking past. Like we were talking about the original when you got people deadpanning the camera and all that. Or there's a group of extras. Um, obviously, this is the extended version again, isn't it? So obviously, you got the, the slime running from the door. Now. I always thought, if I remember right, this effect did not look that well. Yeah, you know, with the bit from the back. I don't know why it just didn't look that good, which is weird because everything else looks really good. You know, with the thing by the neck, the monster. Ah, uh, it's. It doesn't look. That no, good, does it compare to you just wouldn't like bother. It's almost like the effect hasn't been fully finished. Um, it looks TV special for sci fi channel. Oh, yeah, like that. <laughs> the thing is about like, special effects, it's like your brain instantly knows it's not there, but like with models and miniatures and stuff like that, it's your brain can accept it's like physical, you know, damage. These remind wait, me wait. of. Of these, uh, do you Sorry, remember them toys we had as kids when they were like half? Well, not visionaries. It's the same kind of thing, but when they were like a, like a He-Man figure, but like they just the entire chest and the head was just the holograms. Yeah, I think it was visionaries. That they wasn't visionaries. Like visionaries had the holographic chest, yeah, but then there was other uh, ones about the He-Man kind of things. What do you think about these proton packs anyway? I think they're alright actually, they look really good. I like it how they go into more story of how it's built and how dangerous it is, you know what I mean? Because straight out the bat in the, the first one you've got them in the elevator and like they're untested. At least you know what I mean? There's yeah. kinda you know, they're talking scientists and then you've like And again the, the the trap looks like it's all made anyway, doesn't it? It looks massive compared <sighs> to the other trap. See, the trap is a classic. The fucking has a tape top and that's all you need. But see what I mean about lockdown sets and stuff like that, you know yeah. what I mean? It's kind of... I wouldn't be surprised if that little ghost drawn on there was one of the original concept artworks because it looks a bit like Casper. How <laughs> Casper? Aye. White evil fucker, eye. Again, the CGI when she's getting whipped around the room and all that, you can kind of. One blast would have been good enough for me on that. Do you think it's a little bit too long? 
Oh, I told you. But there's a scene missing from there when you see the extended features, which is far better because she blows up the the takeaway guy's bike. Right, right. Is it not on this? Is it not? Unless it comes back to here when he goes on about there, but. I think it might be on this one. I think. Okay, so I've only seen this one like once. So he's one of the craziest things, Ozzy fucking Osborne. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. Papa John's pizza. Christ, honestly, the, 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 in America, they went crazy for a promotion on this. I think it was like, um, you got like a, a Ghostbuster burger and it was like black, it was like a black, um, black um, bread and on buns and stuff like that. And then obviously Papa John's and there was so much merchandise for this. That's, um, I've only just started to notice that the last maybe years years, like weird by like, beetroot burgers and stuff and like, um, when we do the buskers on the uh, the courthouse, you know, I remember Dan Connor was sitting there, and his burger came out, and the burger was black, but like like a dark blue black, and that's like the kind of right. theme of the buns. And I was like, it just doesn't look right. But when you see people doing that, the theme stuff, it's just like, all right, that's a bit of a novelty. Yeah. I mean, it'd be pretty easy to make a Ghostbusters pizza with a Ghostbusters logo on, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm not joking. I think I still have. Uh, it's, like a, it's a Ghostbusters uh, game out. You could actually ring up. Um, it says, I'll be here. It's a classic game. You actually ring a number up. And it would be like, um, be like Chris Hemsworth saying, I've got Ghostbusters. And they would like, tell him when the film. You know what I mean? They get like a phone call. And I still got the business card in my wallet. Then Again, though. Like, no. uh, that, that's a great idea, though, that. Like, like ring up and uh, just Chris Helmsworth just doing five different voices, you know what I mean? It'll pay for itself. Yeah, it was or could be someone else. I can't remember. I might ring up if it's still uh, still around. What do you think about this? What the dancing? Yeah. Not needed. Well, if I remember right, in the theatrical one. It's a metal table and two minutes there and I've got a black t-shirt on. So I was like, yeah, what's going on there? You know what I mean? Because obviously they've cut the scene out. Yeah. It's like Robin Hood when the fucking big carriage goes flying and, and they, they cut just one minute Robin Hood. Uh, he's soaking wet and you think, why? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Robin of the Hood. Love that film. She's, I, she's definitely taller. God, she might be taller than me. I think so. And here's the first glimpse, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, I'm very, yeah. At first, I thought that was going to be his one cameo. I wish it was. But he is officially in the new one, though, isn't he? So. He is, yes, yes. Which is good. Would it have been funnier that uh, before they named them Ghostbusters, they've actually got the name mixed up and called them Ghost Smashers as a joke back? Yeah, to the, to the one, first one. So there he is, Bill Murray, the legend that is. They should have just kept the spin, that was it, not the way he comes up later on. With a really bad um, came with camera on. Again, they would have had him for the set and just obviously, I bet there was a lot of improv when they got him there just to try and make the most of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I love this. This <laughs> is crazy. He's fucking saxophone, man. Really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's quite a long time into the movie before it actually happens. I know we are watching the extended cut, but what do you think of the suits then? Because you've got a bit of a thing going on with the suits. Um, I forgot what it looks like now. When it come on, I'll, I'll tell you. But um, it's just overalls, really. 
anyone can make one really, isn't it? Um, I think it looks alright. It just like it's just a DIY, isn't it? If you think about it. Mm. I mean, it's just it's stuff you can get from it from like a, like not a corner shop, but like a clothes shop, a workwear shop. No, we put some stripes on it. There's loads on eBay. Play suits and stuff like that. So I'm wondering, um, Walter Peck's not in this, is he, even as a cameo? No, no. <laughs> I haven't seen those videos, like people with bags, they see you over a high footage thing on, you know, like a little um, strap on. Uh, normally associated with guitars and stuff. It's not even like a caution tape on you. You used to get people have belts with a caution tape, or I mean, it's like high foliage and stuff like that, didn't you? Again, I think this joke's been a bit too long. Yeah. So you see why they've cut loads of stuff out for. It's too stale. It's not moving quick enough, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I mean, we talked about Ghostbusters 1 and 2, and they're so fast paced, and they're always on the move, and again, it, to me here, it's stalled again, but. It obviously gives the introduction of the new Ecto-1. I think it looks pretty good. And I think that's still in a Sony lock, the, the original Ecto-1. I, I, never, I never thought about going, like, um, when I was in LA, and obviously I went to Universal Studios, and I, I did have two days to kill. That's how it ended up in Compton, but um, <laughs> I never thought about, like, going to uh, Sony Studios. Yeah, because I think at the time the Ecto One was some kind of like in the backyard, just all rusted and stuff. The only put it back together is because of the Blu-ray release. We watched a documentary in the Blu-ray. Oh, and it's all about is it um, the flight of the Navigators? Aren't they just like on? Um, it's just, it's something else. It's, it's like, like a boat or something. It's like a, uh, a it's a coffin. The first ghost buses when go past the the building, um, and there's a museum in the background there. Yeah, um, cool. before was the, like, the mayor's building, you know, we see it's, um, come on, let's beat this red light or green light in the very first film. Right, right, yeah, yeah. That, I, think, I think looks really good, I think. Yeah. I, I do actually like this Fall Out Boy song, actually. There's a guy in the background just dead panning them. <laughs> Old guy. Yeah. So is this the Ozzy Osbourne Fest, isn't it? Aye. So this is a bit like um, so again this is like the uh, the ballroom in it in the original. Yeah. The first time they use anything. The uniform, the the the, the outfits. I haven't actually got any Ghostbusters logo on it, have you? First time I noticed that. Fucking massive fucking shoes on the side, Jesus. Well, it always looks like yours, actually. I don't wear boots. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he's totally like the uh, the hotel manager in the first one. Your head there, Paul. The, the joke. Because this is in a trailer, wasn't it? Oh, is this with the wigs? Proper 80s uh, glam, glam rock that. Look at that. But it's, I mean, going back to the whole, to me, it's very bland. I'm looking around and, like, because it's, it's a modern film, everything's kind of covered. You know, back in the 80s and all that, there were stuff just in the background, and they were like, right, let's just get that scene filmed. And that's when you yeah. would have something randomly in the background. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, remember that like, nostalgia throwbacks. Oh, fucking hell, remember them. But everything's like product yeah. placement and everything now, man. Oh, the guys, you got just so much of. Uh... 
lost stuff everywhere in the, in, the, in, in the room, in the kids' rooms and stuff, and even Elliot's room in AT, Star Wars and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about the mannequin? Um, well, I mean, it's not there. there. It's not, like, it's not there, like, it's, you know, it's a CGI. Test them. It's a TV show, and they made the and they made the toys, toys uh, cars, and heads would fall off and crash into stuff. I remember them quite well, yeah. There was a warning at the end. Make sure you put your seatbelts on, kids, and stuff like that. That was like the time when they made like the Toxic Avenger to uh, cartoons and shit, and when and like you see Toxic Avenger in the movie, like fucking hell, fight <laughs> them, you know what I mean? And aliens and stuff, yeah. And Terminator, where you can actually have like a like an endo skeleton flesh um, suit thing to make suits. Oh and yeah, stuff. You, like, you can put. Uh, but, but even the slime oh, going back there, the slime dripping off screen's really good. But again, going back to you, that's more of a Scooby Doo kind of character. Yeah. So, uh, Ghost goes from another dimension. At least with Ghostbusters, well, apart from the, the big monster thing, that I was always a fan of Ghostbusters too. They're all real things, real people, aren't they? Yeah. Often fine. And then again, what would say might be a little short person. Uh, it's, yeah, it's hot. It just looks like a devil, really, like a green devil. Yeah, it's more of a demon, that, than a ghost. Yeah. Yeah, it's human. Yeah, and uh, another over that way. I mean, at the end of the day, should that not have been Fallout Boy? Do you know what Fair I mean? Enough. Yeah. That looks awesome. <laughs> A fucking squeal on him, man. This is a bit of a... It's been done to death in movies, I think. Crowd surf and then the field crowd surf. Pretty free. And this, oh god. <laughs> See, they could come over for comments with the film. And never take out the people taking the mic out with. Was that a race thing or a, a girl thing? It does look very Scooby Doo. You see the drummer sitting in the background, he's just not moving. <laughs> background extras. Somebody was running, instead of just standing there, green glow. It's what I mean, I, I've done it a few times, um, just making up stuff when you've got like, you know, like fucking five to fucking ten people with a camera, and if you're just standing in the background being an extra, for whatever purpose, you keep you, like you do not look at the camera, like it's a rule. No. But then you you don't know where to look, and then you find yourself pausing for ages, and then you know after take after take after take, you get yourself in a routine. But it's really hard not to look at the camera when it goes past you. Yeah, you see people. They're not even talking. They're just they're just moving their lips. Go blah 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 blah. Obviously, they're moving their lips. But you think they're talking in the background? They're, they're not. Mm. Ah, <laughs> oh, I don't like that bit, man. There's other more on internet, no? They put on YouTube and stuff. Because that would happen now. I <laughs> no. I mean, it's not a true gig, like, because not one person's almost taken like the video of it. Now, 
fucking cheap guitars behind. There he is. Oh, sure. Talk about typecasting the metal crowd. Everyone's got black hair and wearing black. Where's people with multicoloured hairs and shit? And <laughs> Do you know what I just noticed on this? It's not a montage. Well, like in general. You know, like a Ghostbusters montage of going around doing businesses. Well, it's not the 80s anymore, man. We don't need montages. Montage. So what did you think about the body being the ghost logo? At first, I didn't like it, but watching it and watching it through the film at the end actually makes sense a little bit. Mm. I think it's really good. This song is so sweary, it's unbelievable. Oh dear, I think it makes his fucking loads out. Yeah. It's been used in so many movies though. Yeah, I put on, I was like, oh, it's a song of Ghostbusters. It's like, everything is and everything. I was like, whoa, I bet it's in the soft. This is where Bill Murray comes in, isn't it? Yeah. In a second, I think, yeah. Oh. Fucking hell, they were playing that on a cassette player. Did you see that? I did, yeah. That's the most retro thing we've seen in the movie yet. But no, no, you've got Bill Murray in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a long lot of dialogues you've got to get going there. Ah, right, she totally looks like Jennifer Anderson. She was in. Oh, I was watching. Um, what's that called? Um, what's I watching every day? Forget Sarah Marshall, she's in that as a yoga instructor. Nah, she's, uh, I think she's in stuff like um, Adventureland and stuff, isn't she? Oh, I've seen her for ages, I think I'm probably planning soon, actually. See, this, this bit was just wasted, really. It's a very obscure character, isn't it? It's... There's no point even being in it. I mean, do you know how much did he get paid for it? I mean, he probably got more than probably some of the main cast there, aye? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, what would you think of these guys turned up in Afterlife? Uh huh. Well, if you watch the original trailer, yeah, for Ghostbusters, that this film, it says four scientists. It says years. It's like twenty years ago, three years ago, four scientists saved New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's like a pretense. But then when you watch it, it's got nothing to do with Ghostbusters. So the trailer was actually going well. Four scientists saved New York, and now, and now, these people are coming to save the world again. But then obviously they wouldn't have mentioned those four scientists if it had nothing to do with this film. I, I don't know, because obviously you can get the, the Ghostbusters, I think it's the IDW um, comic books, that has these Ghostbusters and the uh, real Ghostbusters and other Ghostbusters, like, 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 a, like a multiverse thing. I mean, I'm guessing that it's Harold Ramis's kids, even though, you know, like... So you... Oh, so we're talking Paul Rudd is one of the sons of the Ghostbusters and it's a generation after that. No, 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 no. But, um, on the trailer, by the looks of it, uh, it's, I think it's Egon's, obviously it's Egon Spengler's granddaughter, I think, who finds her stuff. Paul Rudd's just like a teacher who knows about the Ghostbusters right. from YouTube. Oh, well, you should have done all the commentary in the bloody, um, on the trailer. <laughs> Are we dead quick? 
That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and then dissect it. <laughs> oh, they let it out, don't they? Oh. Did I miss a bit of this cane with a camera on, which is... Oh, no. Okay. And there he goes. What's the reason for his cane had a camera on? I think we see his Casper. Can you remember when um in, in, in um Casper the, the movie when um where he stands runs down the stairs he goes I think you're gonna call someone else. <laughs> so, that shot it was mint. I remember seeing Casper at the pictures like it was kind of like it was a fucking big movie when it was coming out, mate. Oh yeah, it did really well for Amblin and Universal. So I think if Venkman was killed in it, I would have been like, oh, you know, because he would have been like kind of expendable. But the fact that he's playing a different character and he gets killed, you just don't really acknowledge it, do you? I'd rather have him just on the, um, I'd rather just have him on the TV gun. Nah, this course is rubbish and that's his only bit. That's it. There's just, there's just no point. They must have had him for a little bit longer and just put him in this bit. So in a bit from before, but. So here comes Andy Garcia, which is a, quite a big cast, you know. I mean, he was he was really in almost everything in the 90s, man, when it came to, like, under-the-radar stuff, desperate measures, yeah. things to do in Denver when you're dead. He kind of had... Like, was he in one of the Godfathers, the later ones? I think so, mate. It's, it's, I think I've seen Godfathers once, to be honest. Like, but the, the, the mayor comes in really quick, though, doesn't he? It's not right at the end. I I mean so, have you seen have you seen Desperate Measures the movie with uh, him in? Oh, no, I don't think I have no. It's when he's um he's in a hospital and um he's trying to get a bone marrow transplant for his son from um Michael Keaton who's uh gets taken from prison just to like get the transplant and he escapes and like the whole hospital goes into lockdown. Lockdown. So it's right. kinda like a, uh you know, Michael Keaton really turning on the fucking evil factor, you know? Um, right. That was like that was at his pink. That was when he, he and he got he was trying to go into like more action movies, but right. So what do you think about this? May have been I don't know like the things are happening. I don't want them to do ghost stuff stuff and work for a gov and work for a government. It's just a bit weird, isn't it? I it's. But again, though, that's dodging the bullet. Like thirty years ago, when thirty five years ago, now when they made the original. Fuck me, nearly 40 years ago when they made the original. Like, the government, especially in film, you know, the men in black was cheeking around about because you had stuff like the Roswald and all that kind of stuff going on from the 60s. But, like, you didn't have to, um, you know, it was only like with ET and that coming along, then the government was starting to become a factor. But with Ghostbusters, they just didn't have to acknowledge it, you know what I mean? But now yeah. you've got so many, we've had the X Files and, you know, that kind of conspiracy stuff that. You've got to kind of ground it in that. It's like it's like having a mobile phone in a movie, and taking it out of the equation. Like, right? How do you not have? I mean, you can go, oh, I don't get a signal, but you know what I mean. Now it's getting harder and harder not to have a signal anyway. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. So, so, yeah, so now they're looking for the, the government now products of it. But that's it. I mean, it makes sense that the government would know about these things. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. It's some of the original wouldn't have had to really like have to address to get around because but again like it, it like when you're writing a script now and it's it like it's easy to set a fucking movie in the eighties and stuff like that because you don't have you know, you need to have the, the sense of um that you could be in jeopardy, you could be in danger, you've got no like safe rescue and stuff like that. Right. Again, I think that um, additional agents there, I think they could have been a bit better cast. That guy's in everything, the guy in the, the... Where is he? Not um, not the mayor, the other guy. Oh, the gingerish guy, guy, yeah. He's in everything. It's got the extended version. There is some right bloody things in it, isn't it? Yeah.
Paul, keep talking. I'm going to have to quickly go to the toilet. Just for right, a wee. Okay. I'll be two seconds. All right. No poo poos. <laughs> yes, I don't mind this film. I mean, uh, the, extended, the extended version I haven't seen for quite a while. And obviously, I really favour the theatrical because it's a lot quicker. So you do have a lot of dead jokes in, in this bit while they took it out for. But um, no, no, I know, really. Yeah, it's alright. Can I wait for the, the afterlife to come out? Push back at the moment, but can't wait for that to come out. I think this is a bit what Mason was talking about before, where they're testing the, oh yeah, they're testing the traps and stuff now, all the gadgets, which is pretty good. It's good to have these gadgets involved, not just proton packs. So yeah. Hiya! <laughs> hey, uh, I've just seen this as a you talked about before. Oh, uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thingy. But I'm just saying it's, it's really good to have, like, um, not just proton packs, but as little um, gadgets, gadgets and stuff. Oh, the hand shooters and stuff, okay, yeah, yeah. Which I surprised didn't make toys out of. Well, they're almost like whiplashes whips from um, Iron Man 2. The whips. But see, this is kind of maybe his ideas they could have had for a sequel, but it probably works in the development stage that they're, they're, they're trying to work out what works. Because we didn't get that in the first movie. They had the traps and that was it. Yeah. It didn't talk about the technology. And, but it's, it's kind of like... Um, it's kind of like, like James Bond, but he's got all the gadgets, really, isn't it, if you think about it? Yeah. Port on glove. Fucking hell. No. Right, so... In the extended uh, clip I've seen before, the deleted thing, it, it's when she's got the port on back, she takes it out. Not with that. Yeah. See, I think that would have worked better. This just seems that they've came back to this well, you know what I mean? I've only seen it once. Um, so I've seen it in the pictures, then um, I bought it up um, because of uh, the steelbook, you know what I mean? It was kind of had to have part of the set, so. Yeah. I can't remember this, but it's all with acid on the floor. So yeah, I would have done like get a little pack of stiff bush marshmallows or something like that. No, Pete does have good cameo. Though. Again, we're going back to it. It's not as dark as the other two. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely push for. Families and kids, and obviously that's where they're going to make their money, isn't it? But they say that, but then you've got an F bomb in it and stuff like that, and like, I mean, yeah, it, it, it had to be at twelve at the pictures, yeah, twelve here. What was PG? You're not checking the box. Oh, it's, we are all be twelve now. It's, uh, it's a steelbook. The problem with mine's a steelbook, so I take all that shit PG off. Card. Uh. It's a 12 on the um, 3D disc. It'll be, a, it'll be a PG then. It's really um, a fucking steelbook. It's a free disc and then the third disc just in a little uh, plastic slipcase and chucked in the box. It's a bit disappointing. Like. Well done, Sony.
It's like idle hands man's been done to death man when she draws the Pentagon sign. Holy shit and drives off. Like the realization. Yeah. Now is that the book? Totem Spirit Guide? No? No, no, that's that's a that's a Neil Lane's thing, it's not a Totem Spirit Guide. It's a building involved, isn't it? So obviously it's kind of like the first one is a building, but the building doesn't... Spook Central. Yeah. So it's just a dead easy story to follow, isn't it? Well, yeah. It, it sort of just takes a very long, windy road to get there, though, I think. I mean, in, in, instead of it being an extended, maybe it's an uncut version, like, to just have the F-bombs in there and have a initial scene there and then, but not to, as I say, it just yeah. seems to stall, then it gets, a, you know what I mean, you get that little bit of comedy, then there's a, I mean, there's a lot. And I think this is where, like, Dan Aykroyd, Hal Ramis, Bill Murray, they got it, because, I mean, they developed it, but I think Dan Aykroyd, is very very good at pushing across um, bizarre uh, out of world content and he's able really good to filter it out to an audience yeah. and I think at this point you know they're kind of like I think it's here as well they're trying to make sure everyone has an equal part of it rather than one person carry the whole scene because it comes down to the, all the personalities and persona clashes I think yeah. Cause Bill Murray did a lot of it with his just his eyes and his, you know, he, he, mannerisms. Just, in, in mannerisms, and you cut back and you have Dan Aykroyd having this massive tangent. Uh, Egon yeah. could pick up a little bit here and there, but then Bill Murray just needs to shoot his head. He's Annie Potts, isn't she? Yep, yeah, that's that's uh, that's Janine. Yeah, <laughs> she did it. She did it. But that is a good cameo. Yeah, 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 it works really well. I mean, I would probably give her red glasses because then she would have been. But she basically looks at more off the cartoon. Yeah, I, I think they just don't want to overshadow it, do they? They want to try and keep it on. But it's, I'd say something that came back and did, and did the cameos. I mean, they, they didn't have to. No, no, I mean, Rick Moranis didn't, didn't, you know? But see, going back to Sigourney Weaver, would Sigourney Weaver not been better being the mayor? No, it'd be too much. It'd be too much of a bigger part. They kind of put you off watching it, wouldn't it? But she doesn't turn That's up to the end credits. It's almost like a pointless cameo. Yeah, I, I know, I know. But you don't want like someone from the other film doing a big part just to take over. And I mean, I like I like the mayor from from uh, Jaws. Such a cool one. Now, now it gets a bit more interesting with Rowan. I mean, it gets a bit more. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's definitely, as you said, he, he is quite eerie and creepy. But again, I just see Kevin James. <laughs> he's probably laying it down, like any. See, I would be he uh, hiding Vigo in them trans them uh, screens. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised there's no like like little subtle hints from anywhere. But they didn't have this. Um, they had a little bit with it's me, Janosch. Um So I mean, he is kind of he does channel that. Creepiness of Yarosh in the second one, though, doesn't he? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's just, he's just. Um, like I said I, I just wish a bit more, of a bit more of a backstory for Rowan. I mean, they get a bit more behind it. I mean, I know why he's doing it for. You just explain why he's doing it for, but 
could just because get treated like rubbish and they can't wait for the world to end. Oh dear. That's a bit shocking. And you can see his exoskeleton as well flashing through. But again, looking at the restrictions of the set, there's a lot in there, but that looks like a very small room. Yeah. It's the, um, just a boiler room, really, isn't it? Like a DOI room. So what do you think of the uh, proton packs? They're uh, flashing red. I don't mind. I think they're really, really good, actually. I had a little, I had a little bottle of one. Um, I think Flippin' Planet had it in when it first, when it first came out. You got like, a little book with it. And you got like a little model of a proton pack. It's pretty good actually. Uh oh, he's been reading their books to see if he can go cross dimensional ghosties. Well, let's see, now they've got the logos on the, on the suits. Yeah, just on the suit. And, and uh... have. It's just weird, they think, all right, we're going to have to pretend that we're going to arrest you now, but thank you for doing the job. If you look in the background, I think Holtzman just pretends to put a hands back in the back before even the police get to them. And we tend to do like a struggle. She just kind of puts her hands like behind the back wall. Oh, here we go. See, watch, there's no one behind her. Three, two, one. Oh, I'll just put my hands behind her back now. <laughs> Ye god, that couple walked past the shop before. They should have been well up the stairs by that point. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be like forensic teams and stuff like that and no, I don't know. Well, wouldn't they put the bloody um tape across the door? <laughs> yeah. I should have the PK meter there. Right, what was with the guy in the background filming on his phone? Did you see that? Oh, oh yeah, because yeah, he's yeah. the vlogger. That's you when you're walking around filming everyone? I don't use my phone. No no. This is the extended one, so this bit's not even on the, the normal one. I don't, I don't agree with that kind of like reporting kind of, you know what I mean? people. Well, that's it. If someone doesn't want to talk, they don't talk. No. Have you ever seen that definitely. film or heard of that film called Paparazzi? Um, uh, what Mel Gibson made? No. When um, basically uh, the paparazzi go after this lead actor, he's played by Cole Hessner, who's the uh, bad guy from Pitch Black, and um, the paparazzi, I think it's Tom Sizemore, cause a car crash, and uh, his family get injured, and he goes after them one by one. But Mel Gibson's like Mel Gibson produced it, and I think he's and the guy's got to go to rehab, and that like Mel Gibson's in rehab, and it's just kind of the film's really dark, and it shows you how far the paparazzi may go to get a story. You know what I mean? Right, right. I don't know. But like it's like Chris Rock's in it as well as just a takeaway guy. There's loads of like Mel Gibson cameo with like mates in it. Um yeah. for someone that's quite uh, under the radar. Yeah, this does have a lot of dead things, doesn't it? See I, I still think that should have been Dan Aykroyd, the Dean. But he, he must be some kind of personality, like... I think he is, yeah. I think it's like a Saturday Night Live one or something like that. Another, another Saturday Night Live one. Because we don't get Saturday Night Live over here. We get a job for Wash Show. Really wobbly, or wibble wobble. No, we don't get the Jeremy Kyle Show for sure that anymore, do we? Dies off. Something happens. Dies off. Dies off. Something happens. 
slows down. Yeah. Still there? Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you went all quiet. That was the army phone. Uh-uh. No, I just, I quite like the imagery in the book. It's quite, uh, it's a nice yeah, little touch. Good, it? Especially that picture. Yeah, open the barrier one. It just but tells you right there. Just, you don't need to explain anything, it just tells you right there. And this is the music score, but then it stops. <laughs> now this is where she gets possessed, isn't it? Oh, God, yeah. Again, though, borrowing which um, you were talking about, uh, Ghostbusters 2, um, it was something that they wanted to do, and then that's obviously the oh, button yeah. in here. Yeah. When one of them gets possessed. It's just the old struggle bit that, that annoys me a little bit. In the oh, doesn't the slime go... Out of her nose and stuff, yeah, in the extended one, yeah. It's a lot more graphic. We're not just running grab report and pack instead of going into the toilet just in case. Well, that's it. She's the mouth and the brains, but not really like the 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 brave one, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't know. It's just uh, this bit just didn't. Yeah, I see the slime tripping over. See, that's really bad. Then she realises it's in a... You've got your nose straight away, wouldn't you? Yeah. But again, at least it's practical slime, though. I mean, it's... Some of it is. I try to tell. Some of it is and some of it isn't. No, I'm saying that. It does look more CGI, especially coming out of her ears, because it's a constant droop. over the top a little bit. She's had, she's had a bloody kebab, her. Huh? I see, I'm not sure on that. Yeah. I definitely, uh, I can see why it's about for, like... I do prefer the, uh, pink goose oozing slime from, uh, the second one. Yeah. It kind of, it kind of looked like the look and the toys 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 it gets, uh, gets possessed, yeah. I don't know, this bit just... Mm. I've got a few plungers in there in the background. Did you see that? It was like three fucking plungers for one toilet. You need it. Uh, for the food they're going to have. I'd love to see Pros on shotgun. I'd love to see it. Oh, no, what, Steam? Yep, she's obsessed. Possessed, sorry. I know what you meant. <laughs> she just pulled it off well, though. It's just that look. Right, okay, I know she's possessed, blah, 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 yeah? Okay. But... It's much it turns ahead. We're not just break our neck anyway. It would do, yeah. Um, it's a bit of you know, a bit of. Re I know it's not real, but again, again, they're going back. That's the second time that wind has been broken in half an hour. It is. How can I afford it? Nah, there's no. He's. I mean, it doesn't go full way to break it, but again, you would have serious neck problems. Yeah. Again, that's how we do possessions. Just give 
first laps. Oh, I tell you something though, I was watching Predator the other night, man, and come on, do it now, do it now, do it, kill me. Um, <laughs> when he gives the backhander, and it's just like whoosh, and all sorts, and it goes fucking flying. It's just like Jesus. Yeah. So on the twist, Chris Helmsworth becomes a bad guy for a while. He does, yeah. I like his little Ecto bike. It's pretty cool. It looks like a kid's bike, doesn't it? Full of toys and stuff under there. You can't draw and stuff. Was he in the Point Break remake? I don't I've never seen the remake. No, I never have I. It's been one of those films I just saw. I'm just trying to think if he was. I, no, it's just your Red Dawn, really. Right, this is the same as Rick Moranis from the original when he's trying to get in the restaurant. And everyone's looking at him and he's screaming for the dog, trying to get in and then just use the yeah. door. That to that is a total throwback to that scene when he's um trying to get in after the dog chases him. Yeah, yeah. Because you were just walking, wouldn't you? And then this is almost a reflection of when the Ghostbusters just come out from the slime to go and see uh, Venkman and Dana when they're having that meal. It's a loud, bloody um, garbage thing, isn't it? Honestly, God, I've seen a bin man push the street. Like, I went out to get me bin the other day, and all the bins were just lying in the middle of the road, and I was like, Jesus Christ, I know, like, people are keeping distance, but, like, leaving your bin halfway down the fucking street is ridiculous. So we're really going into the the last part of the movie. Really, everything's really set up. And yeah. Ecto two. Do you see that? It's got written on the license plate. Yeah. superhero <laughs> well he is for yes you can tell he had a, like a right I mean a right good time doing this film you can just tell can't you well yeah especially I think like the fact that if you get the script and you know that you're going to become potentially the bad guy but go good again you know what I mean it's a yeah. lot it'd be a lot of interest to the actor i mean do a lot of comedians at the same time they never been through mirror mirror on the wall and there we go we've seen that in the original Oh, is this when Dan Aykroyd's in it, is it? Yeah, he's in a second, yeah. So I think that looks really good. <laughs> it's all marched to Independence oh, Day, isn't it? No. Uh, what's the extended edition on it? Uh -huh. oh, it's got a horrible dance move on, the dancing one. Oh, God. It means it's the mask. No one all dancing. At the Coco Cabana? Oh. Or... Cha 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 cha. Yeah, it reminds me of like, like the mask, you know, Cuban people, all the peace officers dancing. Did you, uh, did you see the Lion King poster there? No. Oh. Flasher. I don't think that's in the, um... No. Well, we'll see like who that guy is there, but he's probably someone really famous baseball player, but we don't know who he is. Nah, nah. <laughs> Here he is. The 
little bit. Better. It's like, um... What do you think of Slimer? <laughs> I think it's... Cl- I mean, again, this is where you're like, right, okay, the, like, Slimer is a good part of the series. Of he looks amazing. I think of Slimer, he's like, 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 <laughs> Nick's day. It's a fucking a great thing for him to do though. So they've given him something to do and they've made him a pure like comedy act. Um but like like smart cameos where you've got like is it Charles Helson um who's in the remake of Planet of the Apes, but he actually plays one of the apes and one of his famous for being nice. in the original. Or the guy who's in um Invasion of the Body Snatchers uh, and in the sequel he gets run over, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost like a passing of the torch. I think that's class, though, Slimer. I think this entire picture is shot really well. The lighting, it looks really good in HD, you know what I mean? you got like, the, the piece of cameras, the piece of the piece of lights behind you got. It looks really good. It does look really good and, like, shot really well. I love this bit. Yeah, it's fucking brilliant, this bit. Right down, shot him, um, right down the barrel, like, looking at him. Uh, who? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, this, this, the bit where the blast looks really good, too, doesn't it? I mean. And then, Steve Puff. Yeah, he was, he, was, he was a good little cameo. That looks really good. And there he is. Then this bit's weird, the way they're shot. <laughs> like just using like a like a glass a perspective thing for like the ground so you can see the face faces. I mean it's it, I mean, they use it in Friday the 13th, the bit where the guy's walking around his hands and fitting Jason comes from above and you fill him up. But, like, sometimes a lot of problems with that is you don't have uh, roofs on sets and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's a great cameo for uh, Steve Puff. But it'll never, like, be as good as the original one when you hear the big steps and just that. You know, when you see him just between the buildings yeah. and stuff and it's just like but it's nice to have a minute, you know what I mean? I mean to me as well, if just if Vigo was on a poster I'd keep going on about it, but like just subtle stuff like that in. Yeah. I mean this still reminds us of uh, Independence Day, just that looming green and stuff like that. You're right, here comes the Going, oh, please don't dance. I don't see the cutout out of the picture. That's thank God. But, mm, hey, they, he went under this, Captain, the theatrical edition. He loved this bit. It just, it just reminds me of, it just doesn't. It's a mask, you're right. No, it doesn't. Yeah? Why would, why would, yeah. Why would the Rowan character world. essentially, like, want to dance like that? That CGI was a bit bad with his head. You know, it just body turn. Honestly. No, no, I totally agree with you. It just, it just came soft. It's like, that's bang. But what, what was that about? Now, this bit here, I keep seeing the, the score. The score for this bit at Times Square is really, really 
good. See the little blurry advert there? Aye. This thing's like kind of dated, doesn't it? I mean, we had this on at work on the screens, and we had this 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 uh, chapter on repeat, didn't we, for a while when it was um, a link sale. Yeah. Boris Geldof, Boris Karloff, sorry, snake people. Geldof. Geldof. But again, yeah, this will all be on green screen though. So, if you watch the, if you watch the um, the making of it, a lot of people have lights on them. I mean, people walking around, they've got like like the just up is there, but they've got like lights on them. Yeah. So you can do the motion capture on that. Um, if I remember right. There's the library course back. But isn't this showing that you just uh, you don't have to put them in a trap? You just blast them away. Yep. Which is different, isn't it? See, that would have should have just been oh shit. Taxi driver poster, there you go. Uh, it's great how it breaks the uh, the black black uh, boundaries. I fucking some lovely colours in it, like. Yeah, it, it does look really good, doesn't it? For the rubbish it's got. I've just been thinking there what film I've watched uh, the last week or so and it was Crocodile Dundee when he's in New York walking around and you see Times Square when he gets yeah. dropped off and stuff. Best bit of film. The music and everything, you know what I mean? Ah, uh, the, uh, the orchestra twist on it. Yeah. To the classic tune. That's it's awesome though. And it just looks really, really good. Nice. It is like, did you know it's on a proton pack S in 1984? Little digits. Right. And that was a yellow first uh, on a proton pack, it says like 1984 and a little digit. And um, obviously that's a big reference to the first one. 1984. Just noticed that. So yeah, when you watch like the theatrical one, when they go and see everyone, everyone's just in a stupid pause for no reason because obviously they cut that dance scene out. It's like, mm, you know what I mean? Right, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Mrs. Slimer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty good though, isn't it? Oh, I mean, that is generally like really good writing like oh slime is going to go past in the ecto one and he's having a full-on party like makes perfect sense i'm trying to let everybody to be over the dark crystal i mean the fires and stuff yeah god i would hear that RKO National Twin. RKO is the um, person who made uh, King Kong. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That was nice. The piano playing the, the theme. But that was, again, that's from the trailer, wasn't it? Yeah. It was all the over, over top music. Not the, 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 the piano music was on it, but not the piano bit itself. So. Oh, God, I hate this bit. I don't know why. I love this bit. Again, it's kind of 
It's almost like, do you know who that should have been? Rick Moranis. Oh, no, that yeah, should have been. Deal, that should have been Rick Moranis. Like, what are you doing here? Just coming down for some. You know what I mean? Because he was always getting locked out of his room and stuff. Yeah. And his tracksuit and stuff, that would have been awesome. Not to have a, just a random, like, person. I mean, a, sh a role like that is normally great for a cameo. That would have been really nice. It would have been a nice, like, nice short like, scene, wouldn't it? Uh, I hate oh, that. God, I hate this. <laughs> the Peter Pan thing. Ugh. Oh. CGI is sometimes on the bodies is a bit funny on his. It's weird. Uh, like, I watched no, I watched the Matrix the other night and I really really enjoyed it and um, I love the first Matrix. But then the second one, it's you know the bodies and stuff in it. It's just so ambitious for the time. And don't get us wrong, for when it was done, it looked amazing. Um, but like yeah. A few months ago, I went through the Matrix films. I really enjoyed it, but especially the second one where you find all the Agent Smiths. And they're all just really weird, like weird CGI, isn't it? But again, that was 2004, something like that. Have you ever seen the um, the MTV spoof with um, Sean William Scott and Justin Timberlake? No. Oh, no, it's absolutely brilliant because it's like um, like Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne have just been put into it, and when uh, Morpheus is doing his big speech and uh, Andy Dixon is like, oh, we're all going back to Morpheus it's for an orgy. It is true what you've heard. It's just extremely funny. But Justin Timberlake yeah. fights loads of stifflers. I like this animation's really good Absolutely massive though. I mean the effects on this guy is absolutely class. Great feel I like. Absolutely great feel. Yeah. They know yes they did, they hit the ball and ball uh, pin shot. Big ass fuck, the war is over. Boom. I mean, that just looks class. It does, yeah. I like how like all the buildings are like going up into the, you know what I mean? So you gotta say, there's no, like, spare no expense. There isn't <laughs> any, any, like, Yes, it is. I mean, it is the same as the other two movies from the Statue of Liberty to Stay Push Marshmallow Man. To that being a total Godzilla moment. Yeah. That's... I think that's actually real. I think. Yeah, it's about across the stream, but I think. There you go. But it's doesn't cross the streams come from a piss joke though, doesn't it? It does now, but it wasn't originally. Since the film came on, you can. <laughs> See, it's one of those things. I glad they didn't use the cross the streams in the theatrical one because it would be too like the original one. So we've got to keep on the extended edition, so it's a bit different. Right, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of uh, levels in the video game that might have got from this. And he's back.
I do like them uh, winter statues they've got on. Um, yeah, yeah, sure is, yeah. We were good at because uh, we were in Wetter Studios last month in uh, New Zealand. And um, when we had a look on the website before we went, they said release February because obviously they released New Zealand first. And um, the last it said they were on the way in, but they weren't there. And I was just like, we're in class to buy one, but. Um, yeah, Pete Beekman one looks so good. So basically using the, the, the car as a trap now, aren't they? <laughs> That's like a die or two almost, that. Oh my god, it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of those die hards. He, is it, he gets blasted with the balls, isn't he? That's how they beat him. Yeah, and there's a lot of kick-off about it. The thing is, you know, you're never going to win. Um, I think it's really funny, I loved it. See, I don't mind stuff like that because get blasted at balls, it hurts. Oh, it does, I eh? Mean, every man knows the same. See, I don't know if I needed this bit. That, that to me that was enough there you know the perfectly perfectly hook on it I mean yeah I don't know it probably just needs something a little bit extra just to you know make it a bit longer Isn't it? Yeah, it's it's just it, well, it's totally quiet, eh? Except for the subtle score, but again, I, I just I just don't think we need it. I never forgive you. I love you. What? <laughs> That's what it's like being bungee jumped. <laughs> you go down and then all of a sudden you gotta fucking back up. Uh, and the hair? The hair thing though. Kind of reminds you of, um, oh, fucking hell. Potter Gates again, where she goes to get, um, Carol Ann and, and the hair's all, like, grey. Well, they're all grey, but bits of grey, because obviously she's died a bit when she went over to the other side again. But this is a bit... Is that, are those wigs or is that their hair really dyed? I mean, those wigs look terrible, Flo. Yeah, they look terrible. Oh, it definitely skull caps. It's like an extra 30 seconds, it's like, what, what's, why? Wasn't it night time? <laughs> it was before, yeah. But all the clouds had moved everything away. He went and got a sandwich. Yeah. Try to cram as much stuff as I can. But it, yeah, I have to be honest, like, if I watch it again, it'll just be the theatrical one. I think the extended version for me is once every, like, five years, to be honest. Like, well, that's just be the ad watch story. That's what I said, yeah. It says it should just be an uncut version, not extend it, and just drop the F bomb or drop the shit bomb. Do you know what I mean? I hope for Savage back to him. Bob 
borrowing a bit from Stone Cold Steve Austin there. See, it just, got, it just goes on for a bit too long. Yeah. There's Ivan Reitman in the background any second. Uh, where is he? There he is. Ivan Reitman. Director of Ghostbusters. Don't know who he is. He's just a dick. Came around to Lord of the Rings, so it's like five different endings. <laughs> Return of the King. It's like, this happens, this happens. This happens. It's finished, then it's happened. It's like, oh, yeah, on. it just keeps on going, you know, and like a... What do you think about the, the... Is it a Garfield joke she makes here? Oh, Garfield isn't like Bill, Bill Murray. Garfield could, could be queen into that. You're right, though. I mean, you had a bit there, and then the sandwich, and you've had this bit, and it's... Just it just keeps on going. This pretty probably. Strange enough, though, they've got football on the background, which is quite rare for America. They don't really acknowledge football, do they? Soccer. Soccer. Come on, guys! It's soccer. See again, we're going back to that whole one scene stalling. That's what we were talking about before. Yeah. She, I mean, Kim McKinnon has, is, this is her film, really, if you think about it. She is the best thing in this yeah. film, I think. And obviously Chris Hemsworth. We need to find out who that last was at the start. It's still bugging us. Get Ernie Hudson. Yes, poor guy. Where are you again? <laughs> oh, no, no. I think he's going to be going to be upset for you. I mean, shit, man. If he didn't have the grey in his hair, he just would look the same. He hasn't. He hasn't aged that well. He's aged um, really well. Apparently, he's seen, he's seen shit out. You're white, apparently. You what? I've seen shit that looks like you're white. <laughs> I'm just doing some court there, like. Anyway, um, yes, the extended version is way too long. Aye. And then it goes on again. I mean, I mean, produced by Ivan Wright, man, I mean, but then he's even oh, yes, more stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is, but again, it's like a firehouse. I totally forgot what uh, the firehouse. And didn't Amy Pascal also do Spider Man Homecoming? Produced that. Oh. So she has produced. Um, yeah, Marvel, yeah. Sony Marvel. Oh, this joke is unbelievable. It doesn't make sense over here, does it? No. It just has a transfer there. Oh, Dan Aykroyd. Huh? Dan Aykroyd gets his name there. Yeah, I, I thought you just uh, carry it, you know, produce it, like. But see, still only them three lockers. Based on the 1984 film The Ghostbusters, but there we go. It, 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 it here we go. It does the same players thing that we've talked about. So you've got to give it credit for that. Yeah. I said it wasn't a bad film. I mean, it's it didn't need all the hate. No, no, it, it definitely did, it didn't. No. It did need all the hatred, which is rubbish. Because to be honest, I would have looked to see it. I would love to see. I'd see the direction of what it went. Because obviously. 
right at the end was obviously that credit scene, isn't it? With, with Goza or Zool, where a credit scene. So that would be interesting to see where it would have went for the sequel. It, 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 I mean, it's like when they cancel a TV show and they don't give you any closure with like, with like a, 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 like a straight to DVD movie, you know what I mean? To keep the fans happy, it's just like, right, we've done with that. Like, especially the production companies, you know what I mean? They're the big producers. Yeah. It's like the new Turtles when they made two, they made, and then, like, right, where's the third? Oh, we're not going to bother, we're just going to remake it. Again, we don't need a fucking another remake of the Turtles so quickly. But that's what we're getting. I know, I know. I love the, the other two turtles films. I really enjoyed them. So here comes Sigourney Weaver. Um, I think I think like this this the, the A Team the movie from two thousand ten. I absolutely love the A Team movie. They did do a sequel. that had a really good cast and it was, it was a really enjoyable cheesy film. Yeah, but the, like the. You don't give it time to find the right audience. Like stuff like Blade yeah. Runner and um, the thing were notoriously known for being swap uh, flops against the likes of E.T., but it wasn't until years later people found the audience, like, you know what I mean? No one went to see Big Trouble in Little China at the pictures. It found its fucking market on VHS and television years later. But now they're like, no, 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 it's crap rebooted, you know what I mean? If it's not an instant hit, studios don't seem to be, like, happy about it. That's it. It's, it's when they put, like, £200 million pounds in a film, I expect a billion. That's what I've seen the other day. They don't need to spend millions and millions of pounds to make a good film. No. I mean, 200 million pound for film is crazy, man. I mean, oh, I don't want it, a billion back. It's, it's crazy, man. It's just insane. Actually, like this course, uh, the soundtrack's actually really good, actually. There you go, answer the call. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's, so, when you have the pictures, this is what you would have seen from the dance thing, wouldn't you? So, this would have seen it at the end, and then obviously, it's added on to like a mantra. But even spending money on there, of like digitally moving the text as he's waving his hands around there, that's not fucking easy to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Famous, ro cool. famous that's rock that's star, that's Ozzy Ozzy Osbourne. But again, if you like, if you didn't watch the extended, you like, you're seeing this twice now. Yeah, I was bad enough seeing it the first time when I seen the extended edition. That's only bit I was just like, oh, please don't do a Cuban Pete. And I was seeing in the in the theatrical one, they didn't do it. It's like, oh, thank God for that. And when I watched the extended edition, I'm like, oh no, man. But he loved it. I loved this. That's was why. Before this was why he's maybe his right the end of the end of the theatrical edition. Before. I mean, I mean, if anyone's got, I mean, you talk about Melissa Carthy was the box office. He's the biggest box office when this was made because four was huge, Avengers was massive. Um, so you know what I mean? Does he he get the, he get the he gets the end credit, doesn't he? Yeah. It's just, I mean, this film got so much hatred for no reason. It's just cheese. It's pure cheese. Yeah. Obviously, it's nothing compared to the original, but nothing will ever be. Afterlife will never be compared to the original, but it's continuing the story. But even even when Afterlife had, dropped, though, they're all going, oh, it's copying Stranger Things. <laughs> it's just like, oh, fuck, man. Yeah, but it, I, know. I mean, the new Ghostbusters is going to be along the lines of, you know, It and stuff like that, where, like, if you don't want it to get a, a, a stereotypical, like, Stranger Things, because obviously they uh, dress as the Ghostbusters in the series, but then don't cast one of the cast of Stranger Things in it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Come back to, like, they... they it's, it'd be like it's and stuff like that. Films from the eighties, Goonies, Explorers, The Lost Boys, Teenagers, we're holding the films up. Yeah. yeah. Teenagers were making the films, so it's kind of going back to that now with the it. You know what I mean? The first it was kids, and obviously the ghost possessors were being kids and teenagers, but that's where the adventure lies. Yeah, I mean, they, you've got to be the thing about it as well as like with the Goonies. Yes, there should be a sequel to the Goonies with the Goonies older now, and it's the next generation. Do you know what I mean? Uh, That's where it would, I, it would be. Because they, if you don't remake the Goonies, it's timeless, it's flawless, it doesn't need anything doing to it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, to be honest, I would not want to see Goonies 2. I wouldn't want to see it because the first one was such a masterpiece. I would not want to see it. I mean, I, I wouldn't. Maybe an animated TV show. I mean, like a cartoon or something like that. But I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't it, want to see it. I mean, it is a one-off story. The only the only thing they could do would be bring the cast back because if they just try and remade it, it just it just wouldn't have the same 
like coming of age growing it's like you could never remake stand by me because rob reiner fucking nailed it in the park with that and like he set it and it's you know what i mean his childhood is that era and the cast is phenomenal you know what i mean yeah but yeah, everything just... like everything's open for a remake do you know what i mean yeah it's just it's crazy so many remakes in it but i mean if it wasn't for this film you wouldn't have some other films happening you wouldn't have afterlife i'm surprised you're going straight to afterlife within a few years of this being the, the flop for them but it's only flop because they spent too much money on it if they made it cheaper it would have made money for them oh yeah like any films make it cheaper make it a bit more practical I mean, you look at all these people, man. I mean, I mean, lead digital artists and stuff like that. I mean. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's fucking mental. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely mental how many people work on movies. Um, of course, there's someone called Jeff there. Um, again, I've got no problem with it being a girl cast. You know, they're all got the time in it. But again, there was just too many. You know, they had a they had a clean slate to reinvent it, but obviously they've got to cater to the diehard fans. And yeah, and, and, and I think with one of the cameras I had above from Bill Murray's was was what it needed. Yeah. I mean, that was nice having that. I mean, you could just totally ignore it. At least the original cast came back on. But it, it's one of those things you put on a Saturday night, I mean, with pizza, something like that. You watch it, but you wouldn't really take much, it, uh, I mean, attention. It wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't concentrate it too much as being a background most of the time, really, now. But um, I, said, I, I didn't mind it. I, I mean, I've heard people kick off the power, but... Um, I don't mind it. I mean, it, 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 it helps Sony, it helps Ghostbusters. I mean, it's 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 like for a new generation, so on. I mean, it's very, yeah, it's very colourful. But even though Martin and off in like a toy range, we had the Funkos, but they didn't. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember them really, really going nuts on the toys. Yeah, you, you could get them little like green boxes and stuff like that, and then if you put more together, you would make a rowing. Um but there was a few things out, like, I mean, you definitely got a few things for it, like, but, um, yeah, it was only a short, a short, um, demand for them, really. I mean, it's, it's like the Ninja Turtles, um, Out of the Shadows. The Krang figure is, like, 20, 30 quid on eBay, boxed, because it's, like, it's the one that everyone's after. Yeah. Again, going with the Turtles, you know, you had, like, Bebop and Rocksteady were enough for the second yeah. one. With Shredder back. Uh, and yeah. then the third one could have been Krang. Um, yeah, they, but they just they, seem they, to go on it. They did a Spider-Man 3. They put too many things in that once it just, and it was all over the place. Like you said, the second one, Big Bob Rock Steady, done. Second time, sorry, the third time, Krang. Not all out, I would love to see more Krang. Hi. It was absolutely awesome. Krang, like. But no, I enjoyed um, enjoyed it. We should do um, another Turtle films also one time. So, in this series, what's next? Turtles? Uh, uh, save for yeah, Harold Ramis at the end, so that's really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, dedicated, yeah. I think, well, yeah, Turtles depends if people enjoy these ones, so hopefully... Sony enjoy be, moved. be moved. <laughs> that's, that was a Sony logo from years ago, wasn't it? Oh, uh, wait, oh well, there, man, it is Columbia. Obviously, fucking Columbia made fucking... Um, Sony, yeah. So they I so they made Godzilla with a foot stamp. So here we go. Yeah, yeah. End credits. So oh. I'd say I would love to see a second one, just to see what what it would do with, with it. But the end credits things are going a bit crazy these days, isn't it? Everyone's I mean to be honest, it, it makes people stay right at the end. Oh so, yeah, I mean the one of the easiest cool. things to do is get a worksheet. And copy and paste white font on a black screen and hit the scroll button, make them in fill from but getting fast, but like sometimes you're talking fifteen, twenty minutes for a fucking end credit roll, especially on some of these bigger films. Because like in the olden days a film used to go the end, music would hit and that'd be it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially if you look back at some of the older Disney movies or you know, like like the endings are so quick. And damn okay. damn right people if you work on a movie, your name should be on that movie, you know what I mean? Remember um, Massive Universe right at the end, the Skeletor pops up. Like, I, think, I think that was the first ever credit, end credit scene I ever noticed. Were that in Flash Gordon? Yeah. When Ming picks his fucking ring up? Yeah. 
Yeah, loads, loads more, right? But now everyone does them now, and I mean, and credit scenes. I mean, especially you, like I said, you look at Marvel. I mean, yeah, well, they they were doing it back then, but I've got no problem with Masters of the Universe finally getting made or like property like Thundercats. But when they're just doing films that's only been remade, we'll go back to the Turtles here. The remake and Turtles again within five years. Go right. Let's make another Turtles film. Look, look at the pro- look at Visionaries. Visionaries would be a great movie. But they'd flash gone. You know what I mean? They've got these because they've got the ability to do these great science fiction stuff now, and they, these their their franchises that could be developed. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's something what it does now with the properties. Law. If they don't make anything for a few years, they could lose the rights to the property. That's the reason why they're doing another Spider-Man films for. Because yeah. they lose their rights back to Marvel. So they had to make Amazing Spider-Man. So a lot of times it's just like, we need to make this now. I mean, to get it sorted. But yeah, I would love to see like a proper like Thundercats film and He-Man film. But I think they're all coming in. Oh, there's He-Man Netflix TV shows in it. Yeah. But right, so that is the podcast for Ghostbusters Answer the Call. All done. The longest podcast yet. The extended cut. Looks like we're going to be back for Turtles. Yeah. do the theatrical next man we oh fuck I'm not again. doing the theatrical <laughs> fuck that but yeah yes yes another one in the bag that's it then well Sorted. thanks for listening everyone we'll see you next time appreciate it that's your that's thanks, your everyone. that's your call to say goodbye as well Paul I am I appreciate it for everyone <laughs> thank you thanks for listening see you next time